Got a few things in the mail today that I want to share with you. I actually think I know what this is, but this is an awfully big box for what I was expecting. It's like one of those Russian dolls that keeps getting smaller and smaller. So this is the new Hasselblad 21mm f4 lens for the X1D. This is f4 to f32, 13 elements in 9 groups. This is going to be awesome. I am stoked. So this is the brand new addition to the XCD system. And of course the X1D camera came out a couple years ago from Hasselblad and they've had four lenses up to this point, all of them primes, and they've covered pretty good range. I've reviewed a few of them on this show when I had the X1D at first to review that. And so I had the 45 millimeter, uh, the 30 millimeter, which I absolutely loved. It was the widest thing they had at that time. Uh, then they also had a 90 millimeter, which is more of a portrait length and also a 120 millimeter macro. It's the only one I haven't used. And I knew that they had announced a couple more lenses for this system. I had no idea this would be the first. This is the 21 millimeter. On a 35 millimeter camera, it would have the equivalent of about a 17 millimeter uh, focal length. So it is an ultra wide. And for a number of reasons that are way beyond the scope of what we're doing here, to do an affordable or somewhat affordable wide angle lens for a medium format system is very difficult to do. I am really stoked about trying this out. It was announced a couple weeks ago and my buddy over at Hasselblad called and said, hey, would you like to be one of the first to review it? And I said, are you kidding? That's music to my ears, let's do it. And so they sent that over today. I've never seen so much packaging for a lens, but uh, you know what, it's a little bit rare and um, we'll keep it in good shape. We gotta see what this looks like first. <laughs> Okay, it's like the bat camera. Like if Batman were a photographer. You can even get all the packaging it came with in. Okay, so more to come on this. I can't wait to shoot with this tonight. So what is this little thing you might be asking? Well, this is a little accessory I bought for my X-E3. So this is the Fujifilm X-E3. I got this and did a review on it, I guess probably about two months ago. I'm still loving it. Um, the Fujifilm stuff is awesome. The biggest deal for me, because I tried the X-Pro2 and the X-T2, is I wanted everything in a little bit smaller form factor. So this could be a really easy camera to carry around and have with me all the time. And I really love it, except there's a couple little flaws in the design here. And one of them is the fact that the camera is so small there's this little nub that sticks up here and that's kind of typically where your thumb goes to rest when you're shooting the problem is is that on top of this little nub sits the autofocus lock and the quick selection uh, button so you end up kind of hitting those a lot sometimes when you're holding the camera off to the side so a friend of mine recommended this to me this comes from a company called Lensmate. I found this on Amazon. I'll link it up in the description. Anyway, they make accessories for the Fujifilm stuff. And so you can get things like for the shutter button, you can get little dials to sit on top of that if you want something different. Uh, some of them are really cool. Some of them are just kind of cosmetic, but some of them like this are fairly functional. So this goes in the hot shoe mount. So you're not gonna be able to use it if you've got a flash on here. But for most of the stuff I do with this camera, I'm working in natural light. It's just kind of my carry around camera, but it puts kind of looks like a film winder a little bit, which is kind of cool, but it puts an extra grip for you to grip onto. That is cool. All right, this is gonna be awesome. So this is a book I've actually been looking for and I found a copy on Amazon. It's easy to get now. This is Alexei Brodovich and this is just called Ballet. 
There it is. So Alexei Brodovich is a name that you don't normally associate with somebody who's a photographer. He was known for being a designer. I've talked about him on the show before. He was the guy who took over as the art director at Vogue magazine in the late 1930s, right before uh, Irving Penn came along and Richard Avedon and a bunch of people he later ended up working with. And Alexei Brodovich is a brilliant mind and did a lot of things incredibly well. And while he is normally associated in the photography world with that magazine, he was the person who was responsible for the complete overhaul of the look and feel of that magazine and the work that um, people like Irving Penn much later, but earlier than that, Richard Avedon were doing, and really overhauled the way that fashion was portrayed in the magazine industry in a major way. He was also a photographer, and it's a, up till recently, it's been a little bit more difficult to find his work. Um, this is a series of ballet images that he took. They're all shot on 35 millimeter at very high ISOs, so they're kind of grubby, they're kind of grainy. They have a lot of motion blur to them, and it was all intentional. And this was a little side project that Brodovich did um, when he was spending time in New York working for the magazine, and it was he would go shoot ballet rehearsals and performances. And this is a collection of work that I have been looking for for a long time, and I've never seen it. And this is out on Errata Editions. And it's kind of cool. In the back, it says, Errata Editions Books on Books series is an ongoing publishing project dedicated to making rare and out-of-print photography books accessible to students and photo books enthusiasts. Each uh, in the series presents the entire content page for page in an original master book work, which up until now has been too rare or prohibitively expensive for most to experience. It's exactly what this is, and this is a really rare insight of work into somebody who I mentioned is associated with photography, but normally not as a photographer, but played a tremendous role in the stuff going on in Madison Avenue in the fashion industry uh, mid-century, uh, 1950s, 1960s, when he really got cooking. So anyway, I am really excited about this. Can't wait to read it. Put a link to this in the show description below too. And finally, this is kind of an odd thing to share with you guys, but I'm really excited about this. So this is a invitation that I got to an opening at an art museum here in Fort Worth called the Eamon Carter Museum of American Art, and they are doing a show on Dave Heath. It is the Multitude Solitude show. I am absolutely stoked. I got invited to the preview, and I'm going to call and find out if I can film in there because I would love to share this with you guys. Uh, Dave Heath is a photographer that I have talked about. It's probably been about a year or so, and I'll link up to his video down below somewhere. I think he's a really interesting interesting photographer. Uh, he was originally from Philadelphia, but ended up moving to New York. And I think the interesting thing about Heath is that he grew up and he was influenced by a lot of what was going on in photojournalism with Henri Cartier-Bresson and namely Eugene Smith. Uh, he was up in New York at a time when a lot of those guys were there and he never actually worked for magazines, but it's really interesting to see how the magazine work that he was inspired by influenced him to do the fine art stuff that he does. And I've showed a lot of these pictures on these videos before. And so I'm really excited about this. There's a big billboard up that I'll show you guys later on too. It's pretty awesome. Uh, anyway, I'm really super excited. Dave Heath, a little obscure trivia here. He is actually somebody that I hit up to do the artist series a couple years ago. And um, he, uh, I, I, I told him what artist series was and he, people like him were exactly why I wanted to do it. I wanted to tell his story. And he sent me a really nice email back, basically saying no, he was just kind of feeling too old and too tired and felt he would be babbling and sent me this really cute self-portrait. I shared all that with you guys before. Um, anyway, he declined and he died probably about six to eight months later. I don't remember exactly the timeline. Um, he was one that I really wish I'd gotten on there. But anyway, I'm really excited about this show. If you are in Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth area at all, go see this. It doesn't open till mid-June, but I'll, um, I'll find out what the dates are. It says Friday, June 15th is what this says, so it must open the next day. Anyway, this is for the preview. So I, I don't know why they invited me. I don't think they know who I am, uh, other than maybe I got in trouble there once but <laughs> in doing the show. Uh, but I'm super excited. I'm going to find out what I can do with that. And so go check out Dave Heath. I'll link up to that other video I did below. And uh, anyway, I know I normally share you guys' mail that you send in, but I had a few things that I was really excited about today that I just wanted to share with you. Um, and uh, the Brodovich book, this, and the Hasselblad, and, and Fuji accoutrement. One thing I want to know from you though, as we begin the studio renovation, I would like to know if there's anything specific you would like to cover. I had a request the other day, somebody on Twitter said, could you please talk about lighting, like natural light versus studio lights, how you do it, how you get it set up and all that stuff. I'm happy to talk about those things. And if there's anything else you guys would like to know about, let me know and I'll cover them when we start getting into these videos, which will be like probably tomorrow, because I'm really tired of this. It's just like closing in on me. So anyway, um, until the next video, I will see you guys then. Later. Oh, 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 oh,